Hi everyone, happy Thursday. Lots of questions the last couple of days about altitude sickness and how COVID is behaving a bit like this in some patients and why ventilators may not be the best bet for every patient with COVID. So a little bit of a backstory. Typically when people get severe illnesses like acute respiratory distress syndrome or ARDS, which is what ends up leading some people to end up in hospital and ICU, and pneumonias that can result from COVID or from secondary infections from COVID. What we typically have done in the past with these patients, if their oxygen levels are going down, which is typical, is we put these people on ventilators. We put a tube down their trachea into, you know, above the lungs, and that helps push pressure and oxygen to help these people get oxygen to their lungs because what often happens is they start to fill up with fluid, with this sticky, you know, um, viscous kind of fluid. So they can't breathe well. They, uh, their oxygen levels tend to go down. And so we intubate, we put this tube, we push pressure to keep the lungs open and inflated, and we give oxygen. And this is typical for lots of illnesses like pneumonias where people need to be um, uh, admitted to the ICU when they're very sick. And some people with COVID-19 that are getting very sick look just like this with this fluid kind of building up. And when their oxygen levels go down, we see this typical reaction, which is oxygen goes down and then people have difficulty breathing. So they start gasping, they start having, you know, retraction, sucking in, in their lungs, sucking in over here, moving their trachea in and out, gasping for air with typically a high uh, respiratory rate. <sighs> They're having difficulty breathing. They're trying to bring more oxygen into their lungs. And that's true of some people with COVID-19. But then other people are not necessarily behaving that way. And that's why some people, ICU docs and emerge docs and researchers are thinking, why is it some people are not? Some people with COVID-19 have low oxygen levels, but they're not panting and they're not having difficulty with breathing. But instead, they're having a different reaction, which is headache and dizziness and nausea and vomiting and sometimes decreased level of consciousness. But they're not having respiratory distress. So we're like, why is that? That looks like altitude sickness. So when you're going up, when you're you know um, ascending on a mountain, if you're, let's say, climbing Mount Everest, the oxygen gets thinner in the air, your oxygen level goes down, but you don't tend to have difficulty breathing, but rather you have these other things like headache and dizziness, etc. Some people with COVID-19 that are very unwell look like this. They're not panting, they don't have difficulty breathing, and yet their oxygen levels are very low. In these cases, in altitude sickness, we don't typically intubate these patients and you know push pressure and push oxygen, but rather it's more kind of symptomatic. You give them oxygen, sometimes with a mask, but we're not intubating them. The other thing with intubation is that not only are some people not benefiting from the pressures or intubation and don't even seem to need them per se, <clears throat> Some people are actually getting worse once they get intubated. And the thought around that is that COVID-19 virus can be aerosolized. If you're pushing pressure and oxygen on it, it kind of breaks apart into little pieces and it aerosolizes, it goes into the air or it breaks apart inside the chest. And the thought is that perhaps if we're ventilating some patients, they're actually getting more of a systemic spread of that COVID because we're pushing air on it and pressure on it. So the thought now is that if a patient is able to do other kinds of ventilation, so whether that's just oxygen with a mask, like the Prime Minister of the UK had, he didn't get intubated as far as has been reported, but he got oxygen and a lot of other patients are doing well with this. Or if they need even a little bit more pressure than that, some people are benefiting from what we call CPAP, which is similar to what people use at home. If they sleep apnea, those masks that kind of push pressure, they're not going into their trachea. They're not being intubated, but they are having pressure kind of filling the lungs in a smaller kind of way, and they're getting oxygen that way as well. And a lot of people have been doing very well with that and maybe even doing better than some patients that are being intubated. So that's, that's the piece that we're thinking about with altitude sickness. Not every patient with COVID-19 has this kind of symptom, but some are. And as well, kind of the world is running out of ventilators. So if we're able to figure out other ways to get oxygen to these people and get them through so that they survive, it might be a great thing to be able to use other things like just simple basic oxygen, you know, in a nose, in a nose cannula, or by face mask, or sometimes even what we call blow by, which is just like a tube that's just sitting external to the person and, and blowing extra oxygen that way. 
The other thing is too, when you intubate someone, you have to sedate them because otherwise your body will try to, you know, expel that tube. And sedation is not that great for a lot of people, especially the elderly. A lot of these people are, are elderly and frail. When you sedate, it can have negative consequences to your brain afterwards. And of course, if you're going to survive COVID-19, we want you to be exactly the way that you were before in, in terms of brain function. So ideally, if we could avoid sedation, avoid intubation for some patients, that would be highly valuable. And we're learning more every single day, right? COVID is four months old. We don't know that much. It's novel. And so every day comes more, more information, but it's something to think about. And hopefully every day, more information, more ideal treatments, antibody testing looks like it's promising and might be better than uh, swabs, which miss up to 30% of people that have COVID. So if antibody tests come, hopefully we can be better about knowing who has had it, who has antibodies to it, who is less likely to infect other people. So that would be really awesome. So more on the horizon. Hopefully we get out of this isolation soon. It looks like it'll be a number more months though, unfortunately. Anyway, hope you're doing well. Please share this if that's helpful. Please ask questions if you have any questions about this and I'm happy to keep answering your questions. Keep sending them. Let me know what you want to know about and I will explain it hopefully in a way that makes sense.